Right. Welcome to a short video. Because I'm in the kitchen. And I'm getting ready for a big golf tournament tomorrow. At a cracking course. Lanark. One of the best inland courses that I've played. Huge greens. Massive greens. Fantastic uh, land it's on. It's uh, on a... Um, I'll put this kettle down. It's on a glacial uh, trough, which basically is a massive deposit of sand. So it's very much like a lynx course, but it's uh, nowhere near the sea. Absolutely drains fantastically. Greens are huge. Biggest greens I've seen on an inland course. Uh, other than St Andrew's Old Course, for example. So you can get a kind of handle on it. Anyway, that's me. And I'm, you know, apparently really quite a rubbish golfer. And I get told that quite a lot. Um, I'll not tell you who told me that. But I've been told a few times that I'm pretty rubbish at golf, um, apparently. And um, it was a few weeks back. And... Uh, Ex-pros, people like that, you know, and what I'm getting at here is people uh, troll people, don't they? And uh, they get some kind of kick out of it or enjoyment or uh, the feeling of empowerment. And what I do when I get negative crap like that and uh, like somebody telling you that you can't do something and let's face it, it happens quite a lot. And if all through history, everybody who got told that they couldn't do it and can't do it and you were rubbish at, never went and actually did it, then nothing would have been achieved. So what I do is I turn that negative shit into positive energy. And if I can, and when I can, I make sure that those people get it rammed right up them. Uh, because occasionally, every squirrel finds a nut or... A blind squirrel finds a nut. I, sat, I can't remember what the thing is. I'm rubbish at that type of woman innuendo thing anyway. So, uh, but you get what I'm just in that. So the point of this video is James Wilkshire, right? Now, the exact same things kind of happened to him, but on a bigger scale, because he's got a lot more subscribers uh, than I have. And, uh, you know, he's getting uh, bombarded with this crap constantly when he's trying to play professional um semi-professional tournaments and trying to get into the professional game he's on the jamiga tour very good golfer um i've messaged him a few times uh i've watched a few of his videos uh great swing great technical ability uh just in between the ears the six inches that's the only thing that's holding him back now, it's not James's fault that all this has happened to him. If he thinks back to when some, and I'll, I'll name him because this guy did it to him. Uh, Rick Shields and his Winkin cohort did a podcast about him saying that he was rubbish. He was, he was not, he, he wasn't ever going to make it. Why was he filming himself? He, he, he's trying to be a pro golfer, but he's not got it in him or he's not going to make it. And he's just like going through the motions and uh, this attack came from nowhere, you know. Now, what you've got to remember with these guys doing these podcasts with 1.5 million subscribers is lots of flaming idiots take what they say and then jump on James's channel. This is James Wilkshire we're talking about. And start giving him trolling when they should be rolling. So he's getting trolled because of two guys stepping out of line saying... Their opinion about someone, again, oh, he's never going to make it. He's never going to do this. He's never going to do that. Listen, Jamesy Boy is a quality player. And there was loads of people shooting Dan Gavins down. Oh, he'll never make it. He'll never do this. He'll never do that. He'll be back on the challenge tour. Loads of people shot doing Marcel Seam, saying he'd never make it again. He'll be trolling on that Fleming Challenge tour for years. These people just get off on being trolls, right? And what did those players do exactly? What I said to do, they rammed it right up them. And they went and from and won, right? It only takes 
Three rounds of golf for four rounds of golf. One glorious weekend and you're a major winner. So never write yourself off and never listen to the people who say, you're never going to do this, you're never going to do that, you're never going to make it. Because the bottom line is, when the chips are down and when you're in the darkest hole ever, you can still pull yourself out if you just don't give up. I don't think James is going to give up. I don't think James Wiltshire is going to chuck it. He's talking about maybe minimising the filming that he does. I gave him a suggestion. I said, why don't you just get your caddy to kind of like randomly film you uh, just with some... It doesn't need to be a top. Just like use his iPhone, right? So it's inconspicuous. And basically film him from just wandering about and stuff like that and playing shots and then just edit it together with a voiceover, right? And that way... He probably won't even notice he's been filmed. Not every shot, but just highlight reel or something like that. And a wee behind the scenes, sort of look in at the Jamaica tour. And maybe like when the players all come off the course and they all sit down and they're signing their scorecards. Let's have a wee insight into what goes on and a wee chat between the players. What happened? How did you feel you played today? Ah, oh, do you know? How did you do? What did you hit at the seventh? You know... Why did you hit that shot? Why did you draw it off the, the ninth tee when I, I was trying to cut it off the ninth tee? These are things that you've got to ask, right? Better players and players of the same ilk as you so that you can bounce ideas off each other and then come up with like a, a game plan to improve your game. Because you can have the most technically sound golf swing in creation, right? Case in point, Adam Scott. Why doesn't he win every single week he goes out he's got the most perfect technical golf swing in the world and he absolutely when you the technicians will say he just never misses the sweet spot every single shot so why doesn't adam scott win every single week he goes out the six inches in here you've got to be strong right you've got to have the will you've got to like have the mentality that you will never ever give up and very few players have ever had it as strong or as powerful i mean if you think to the greats you've got the likes of bobby jones you've got jack nicholas you've got Seve, right you've got arnold palmer the the will and the power they had in the mind uh, over Obviously, you've got to include Tiger in that because they've just got that, right? You, it's something that you need that you just can't, like, switch. It, you've either got it or you get it, right? You get it for four days and then you lose it again, right? And that's why we all play golf because it's so addictive because... Everybody can hit that sweet spot or sweet patch, right? But it's getting there and maintaining that level, right? That's the secret to golf. And also, golf's a bit like, you know, boxing. You've got to take the punches as well as give them it. Not actually, literally, James, don't hit anybody, you know, but... You've got to give back. When these trolls are from and trolling you, 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 you know what I mean? Turn it into positive energy. Take the negative, turn it into positive. And then, like I say, gear right up them. Unfortunately, I tried that. It didn't work this year because they won again. But, you, you know, these big team matches, there's a battle. There's a battle between two teams. There's an internal battle between how you're playing on the day and how the opponent's playing because it's one-on-one -on -one match play and the battle continues. It's a mind battle as well as uh, physical because over the course of the tournament, you get tired and you saw it in the Ryder Cup, right? We're all talking about, you know, mental stuff and strength. The main thing on one-to-one -one match play or any type of team competition in golf, I know we're diverting slightly, but we're still talking about the same thing here. If you hold that putt first, that hole goes from... 
the guy who holds the putt first, the pressure is like, whoa! And the Americans in the Ryder Cup, well, there was teams of them starting off with five birdies in a row. Happened to me, five birdies in a row, five down. Uh, the fact it was three pars, one eagle and a birdie, you know, that type of thing. And you're five down, you're thinking. <sighs> but the other thing I was thinking was, well, there's still, I'm only five holes in. There's still plenty of holes to try and come back. It's not going to be easy. Don't get yourself on. But you're not out of it. But it's a hard place to come back from when someone is that good. And like I say, if you constantly hold a putt first, that is getting to the point where pressure, pressure is a different thing. You've got to deal with that a totally different way. Um, and that's another conversation. But anyway, main conversation today was trolling James Wiltshire and Rick Shields and why the heck did he bait this whole thing in the first place with a stupid podcast, which I believe he's taken down. Comment below. And uh, support for the channel. If you made it this far, listen, I support a ding, a bing, a boom boom. Because it's all for charity, all the ad revenue now is going all, we've actually got monetized. Hooray! Uh, that's off Google. And uh, all the ad revenue is going to uh, Macmillan, Cancer, Help the Heroes and Shelter UK. Um, so it's really, you know, helping others. Uh, we've also got a Patreon page that you can have a look at. Do what you can do if you can, you don't have to. But you'd be supporting the channel and maybe getting us some, you know, doing these things all costs money. Going places all costs money. Uh, going to these big courses to film vlogs that you all want to see, it all costs money. You know, you want to see Mikey Boy hacking around filming Glen Eagles or somewhere like that. I do not get these courses for free. Uh, I've got to pay, you know, £200 or whatever it is for a round of golf, which to me is bonkers. And I'll say that again, absolutely bonkers. I just don't care who you are for 18 holes of golf. You could argue it's three hours, three and a half hours, four hours, whatever you want to call it. Um, why set these prices the way they're doing? I know they've got to make a living, right? They've got to make ends meet. But at some point, this bubble that we're in, the golf bubble, it's going to burst. 